I'm Willie. Welcome to my channel. Thank you for being here. If this is your first time here, please consider clicking subscribe. If you're a returning subscriber or viewer and you don't get notified when I publish new content, go down and click that little bell icon. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'm glad you're here. What we're going to talk about tonight is this little beauty. This is the Grandstream GWN 7630 access point. <clears throat> this is one of Grandstream's newer APs, one of the newer offerings. And a little bit about this AP is that it is a um, a four by four Moomimo access point. So with all of the wireless bands combined, we can do like 2.33 gigabits per second. It does have dual uh, gigabit ports on the back. And you can see one of those is PoE, one of those is not PoE, and then we've got a reset button on the front. You've got LEDs. There are some important uh, things on the back on this tag. Um, when you get this access point, there's several ways that you can connect to it. You can plug it into the network, and you can use the discovery tool, which is what we're going to do to connect to it. Um, or it has an SSID that it broadcasts. You can connect to that. So the SSID and the Wi-Fi password, that information is all on the back. Also, the default admin password is the same as the Wi-Fi password. So what else do you get in the box? You get a quick start guide. You get a couple mounting brackets. Of course, you get the AP and you get some uh, screws and anchors. And as always, Grandstream is upfront and honest about this and you get a copy of the GNU license, the public license. So I always get the question, can I do voice over IP over Wi-Fi? And there are a lot of vendors who won't touch it. There's a lot of vendors who will tell you, that'll tell you no. But if you're going to do it, in my opinion, Grandstream is the way to go because they actually have their access points. Um, voice is one of the things that they're very concerned about because they are, you know, they're, they started out in telephony. They branched out into networking prod products, which is awesome. And the Grandstream APs will uh, work out really well for your wireless voice over IP um, deployment. These are powered by PoE or PoA+. They say you can have up to 200 connected clients per AP. It will cover 175 uh, meters. They do have the advanced QoS so that any application such as voice need that low latency. Um, that is in the access point. They also have a secure boot on these so that the um, firmware cannot be modified and there is a unique certificate random password per device. Now, with the Grandstream APs, there are a few ways to manage them. You can manage them as a standalone AP or you can use a single AP and this particular access point can control 50 other APs. So it can be the master for 50 other APs. So you don't have to have a controller on site. You can also join it to GWN.cloud, which is Grandstream's free cloud hosted controller. Uh, we do have a GWN that is going to be on-prem coming next year. I don't have any more details besides that. I don't have any timelines. All I know is it's supposed to be Q1 or Q2 next year. So keep your eyes open for that because we'll definitely be installing GWN locally. Um, and so those are kind of the, see, we talked about uh, by ourselves with the uh, built-in controller, we can do 50 and then GWN.cloud. And then there's going to be, like I said, that on-prem version. So uh, I'm super, super duper excited about that. Um, what I'm going to do is if you take your, your Grandstream Quick Start Guide, it has several different options in here for you to be able to connect to this access point. It talks about connecting to the um, SSID and logging in that way. It tells you how to just discover it through a web browser uh, using... Um, the https colon slash gwn underscore 
the MAC address of the device dot local, um, or it tells you how to use the discovery tool. And that is what we're going to do. So when, once you get this, this quick start guide does show you absolutely everything you need. This is a very nice, thorough quick start guide. It even shows you all the different mounting options for the AP. So what we're going to do is I've already got this uh, fired up. Um, the latest firmware um, is, I think, version 1.0.11.8. And I believe this access point, uh, I set it to upgrade and go out to uh, Grandstream, and I believe that it did that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the uh, discovery tool, and then we're going to connect into our access point. So let's take a look at this. All right, so here is the discovery tool. After you download it and you open it, you're going to have to select a network interface on your computer to uh, run the scan. So I've got everything plugged in via Ethernet. So I'm going to say OK there. I'm going to hit scan. It's going to scan the network. It's going to show me all the grand stream networking devices that are available. You can see this one is uh, 192.168.1.100. So if I click manage device, it's going to launch the web browser. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. This is what it would come up to. So if you've been sticking around Grandstream for a little while, you're going to notice that they've unified the uh, interface on a lot of their devices. So we're getting that same look and feel, which is fantastic. Now, the default username for this is going to be admin, and then we're going to have to put in that password that is on the back. So I'm going to do that real quick here. And uh, hard for me to read across the room here. Not really across the room, but that is a sm small sticker, and that is the guys over here. All right, so when you log in for the first time, you are going to get the option to run the setup wizard, and it will go through the basic setup of the device. And if we decide that we don't want to do that, we can access the wizard at any time by selecting the gear icon at the top right hand uh, portion of the screen. So I am just going to close that. And we're just going to take a quick look at the interface. You can see that this is very controller-esque, you know. Um, so you can see we've got all of our channel information out here, all of our clients, all of our APs. So in the next couple of videos that you're going to see about Grandstream, I'm going to break out a second one of these. And we're going to have Master Slave um, along with a couple other things that you're going to see. We can uh, take a look at our top AP, our top SSID, top clients, and then over here we have alerts and notifications. So kind of everything you need is boom right here on this uh, overview. Up here at the top we've got the uh, setup wizard. It's not a gear, it's actually a question mark. So if uh, somebody from Grandstream sees this, they, uh, the gear is actually a question mark. Over here we've got search we've got this is the refresh interval we've got our language option this shows us our username and we can log out so the gwn series of access points is fully featured over here would be our ssid so this is that ssid that uh, comes default on the device and you can see um, that right now that gwn 0003 f4 that ssid it's using dual band Wi-Fi. It does not have a VLAN ID. It does not have a schedule. Its security mode is WPA2. MAC filtering is disabled. We are not using Captive Portal or RSSI. So we can edit this. And we can come, come in here and we can set all of those options. So we can hide the SSID, which if you've worked with me, you know that I don't think that that's a, a, a great idea in most circumstances. Um, we can set a VLAN for this SS SSID. We can put a wireless client wireless client limit. We can put client inactivity timeouts. We can enable the captive portal, enable the schedule, change our security mode, change our WPA uh, key mode. So there's uh, enterprise or personal, which is the pre-shared key. Our encryption type, our pre-shared key, 
client bridge support. So the client bridge bridging function allows to set the access point as a client to connect to the wired network. And the access point of the client is to connect to the network wirelessly. So if you've got a um, another SSID and you want to bridge this in, so you're actually using the access point to connect to another um, SSID, you can do that. We've got client isolation. We've got a minimum access rate limit, that min RSSI, our beacon inter intervals. Um, so the beacon interval and the um, delivery traffic indication message, the DTIM, unless we are instructed by support, we're usually not gonna mess with those or unless we know exactly why we're changing those settings. Uh, we have multicast to unicast, enable voice enterprise. So you can see right there, uh, this is one of the few brands of access points that actually talks about voice in the wireless and, and tuning the wireless for voice. We've got uh, 802.11R, K, and V. And then we have ARP proxy. Over here, we've got device membership. And we, do, we only have the one AP for now. So we come to access points, you're gonna see that, that there's only the one AP and it is the master. So when we add that second access point, we're gonna get into that configuration. Here we can view our clients. We don't have any clients. Um, client access, we've got time policies, banned clients. We've got our captive portal set up here. And you can see that they've got a policy already set up for Grandstream, login for free. And it doesn't, and it looks like they've got a splash page set up, so we'll have to take a look at that. We can do vouchers. We've got bandwidth rules. And then under system settings, this is where you can come in here. I changed the firmware server to firmware.grandstream.com. Was able to upgrade the firmware without having to download it. It went out, downloaded it itself. You've got your debug screen, email notification setup. You've got your schedule, your LED control. Uh, DHCP server. They do, um, they, these access points will do mesh. And here uh, are all of the settings for that. Just like with most other vendors, the mesh on this is proprietary to Grandstream. And then of course, if we go to about, it shows us another copy of the, um, the GNU public license. So I am super excited about this. I wanted to get this in front of you. If you want to do voice over IP um, over Wi-Fi, this is really one of the devices that you should be looking at. And we're going to get into using this in combination with the router and another access point. I've got a whole box of goodies. So stay tuned. Um, and, and that is coming. If you want to know more about this device, you know, let me know. And uh, if you've got questions specifically, I will do a like a Q&A follow up. But I do want to let you know that, you know, one of the next few videos I'm doing a uh, one of my next videos, um, probably the next video is going to be a we're going to talk about DNS filter. I did a video about them a long time ago um, and how to, to do content filtering for your network. I'm going to uh, update that with some of their new features, but then the very next video after that, we're going to be back to Grandstream, and we are going to set up that other access point along with the router. But if you have any specific questions, and I get enough questions, I will do just a Q&A on uh, this right here. Super duper feature-packed uh, Grandstream device, and I can't remember what the warranty is on this. It's at least a year. But um, I'd have to go look because I think like with Grandstream, I think at least on their phones, I think standard warranty is three years. So and there's not a lot of vendors that are giving you a three year warranty out of the gate. These devices are super easy to use. We'll also look at the GWN.cloud service and how we can control those devices with that. And then we'll also get into the captive portal because if you're going to deploy these, you know, you might as well use it, uh, you know, for not only your enterprise 
or your you know your business side of the Wi-Fi with your voice over IP, but you may as well go ahead and turn up the guest access. So we will get into that as well. Like I said, if you've got any questions about this access point, leave them leave them down below. There is going to be a follow up video anyway, but if you know there's some specific things, you know maybe we'll just do that the the Q and A. So um, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. If you need IT consulting for wireless or wired networking, voice over IP, um, or security, reach out to me at willyhow.com. There's a contact form over there. Fill that out. Somebody will get back with you as soon as possible. If we can't help you, we'll get you to someone who can. That's our promise to you. And we do have these things in the wild, and they do they work fantastic. We never have to touch them. Um uh, that is one thing I can say about the firmware on the access points is we have not had any issues with those. I will leave an Amazon affiliate link to this down below. You don't have to use any of the affiliate links below. Um, if you do, thank you very much. They do kick a couple bucks to the channel to keep things rolling in uh, and they don't change your price. So that's, uh, that's kind of the story. And thank you to all my uh, patrons over on Patreon. This has been the Grandstream GWN 7630. Come back for the next video where we're going to deploy two of these and or potentially answer all of your questions. So once again, I'm Willie. Thank you for being here. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.